It all began about two weeks ago, or at least when I first took notice of the portal. I live in a relatively secluded area, not in the woods or out in the Arctic or anything like that, but on some farmland in Idaho. I'm a farmer, you see, with a pretty big patch of land that I inherited from my father. My family has been growing potatoes for nearly 100 years now, but I'm not here to boast about growing potatoes. Let me tell you more about this portal. It appears every night exactly at 1.26am. I guess some would technically call that the morning, but I won't argue semantics. Anyways, it always appears at exactly that time. It also always appears in the same spots in my field, which allows me a great view from my window. The portal itself is difficult to describe, so I'll do the best that I can. I think most people who enjoy video games and have been exposed to numerous different portals in their games may imagine it as a perfect circle, or perhaps maybe oval in shape. But I can say that the shape of it changes every night, that there is no definite form. It is a jumbled mess of shapes, sometimes with odd jagged edges, sometimes smooth and rounded, often a combination of both. So describing the form of it is difficult. Whatever nebulous shape the portal itself takes, it is always around 7 or 8 feet in height. And it just floats above the ground about 6 inches, though this varies somewhat too. Looking into the portal, you would once again generally expect a swirling vortex or perhaps a view of your destination if you were to step into it. But none of that is the case here. All you can see while looking into that portal is infinite darkness. There is no indication where it would take you. The portal has a surrounding blue energy that simply floats around it and illuminates the entire area. It is very bright and when it opens, I've had to shield my eyes until they could adjust to it. But without this surrounding energy, it is likely the portal itself would just appear as a strange black shape. Resting in the air and I would have never seen it. The portal is absolutely silent. There is no crackling lightning or strange sound that marks its arrival. And it doesn't make any sort of hum or ambient noise that some may expect. As I said, the portal appears at exactly 1.26am and it disappears at 1.31am, exactly a 5 minute window. The first time I noticed it, I had woken up and I felt the need to empty my bladder. I drank a bit too much water before I went to bed that night. I was alarmed by the bright light coming from outside of my bedroom window, and when I went to investigate, well, there it was. I was a little bit afraid but curious at the same time. This wasn't some science fiction movie or video game. Of course, I wanted to study this phenomenon, but after one night of seeing it, I wasn't sure if this was a repeated pattern or just a one-time event. So the next night, I prepared a large pot of coffee and I endured a sleepless night. I'm not much of a night owl, so this was quite a challenge, but in the end, it paid off. A portal appeared at exactly the time that I told you and after that, I set an alarm every night for 1.20. I would get up and I gradually moved over to my window and wait patiently for the thing to show up. It was a bit like watching fireworks. A short but beautiful spectacle that you didn't want to take your eyes off of. By this point, some people are probably wondering how I even knew this was a portal. I guess the answer to that was that at first I really didn't know. All I knew was that this amorphous shape with surrounding blue energy appeared outside my home every night. It wasn't until the fifth night that I could confirm it was indeed a portal, because it was on that night that something stepped through it into our world. The portal opened right on schedule that night. Everything was normal for a minute, well as normal as it could be considering the circumstances. But then it all changed after that. The portal floated silently as it normally does. But then I noticed what I can only describe as a ripple in the darkness of the portal, and a second later, a foot emerged, 
and then a leg, and a chest, and then a face. And within two seconds, a man had fully emerged. The man was entirely nude, and from appearances, was human or at least perfectly resembled a human. I didn't know what to do. My reaction was a mix of fear and awe, and I wondered if I should ask the man if he needed help, or what was on the other side. But for that night at least, I just sat there watching him, and that portal from my window. The man who had just emerged threw his head back and opened his mouth. A sound began to admit from him that I can only describe as a dull ringing tone that irritated my ears, and it made me feel sick to my stomach. That's all he did for the few minutes that he was here. No other movement, no speaking, just standing there like that and emitting that sound. To me, this confirmed that he was not human, or if he was, he had a sort of strange power to emit sound like that. The portal promptly closed at 1.31, but the man remained for about another minute. What happened to the man, just like trying to describe the portal is difficult to explain. As he stood there emitting that irritating tone, I started to notice a certain distortion, something that was happening around him. The area began to bend, contort, and stretch. From what I can tell, this was only visual, as the affected landscape was not changed physically after the fact. The man, however, became more and more distorted, until I blinked and he had disappeared. It was like he had phased out of reality, the distortion sweeping him away. The ringing tone finally stopped when he left and I could only sit there dumbfounded at what had just happened. The next night, I again woke up at 1.20 and I made my way to the window. Things played out exactly the same as the previous night. The portal appears, a man comes out, the man makes the ringing tone, and the portal disappears. The man distorts and then disappears too. Eventually I got brave and I went outside rather than just watch from my window. I was scared when the man came out of that portal. But he did just what he did every night, and he stood there making that noise. I had prepared myself by bringing earplugs, and inserting them which softened the ringing that had been making me nauseous previously. I tried to speak to the man, but there was no response. He didn't even recognize that I was there. I tried to grab his shoulder and get his attention, but my hand passed right through him like he was some sort of specter. Turning my attention to the portal, I stared into that darkness, almost hypnotized by it. I didn't even blink, until that same ripple effect I had seen before when the man emerged happened again. I stood back and I waited to see if something was going to come out. I should have been scared by this, but I just felt drawn to it. I couldn't look away, so I didn't miss it when that enormous dark hand emerged from the portal. The hand shape was vaguely human, but where we have rounded gentle fingers, its fingers were much more pointed and sharp. And while we have skin and bone, this hand was more like a shadow with the same sort of darkness that the portal consisted of. The hand opened and closed for a few moments, like somebody trying to relax or stretch out their hand. And then it did something. Something that finally had scared me. It pointed directly at me. It then grabbed the man and violently pulled him back into the portal. I looked at my watch and it was only 1.29. For the next two minutes, there was no further activity and the portal closed as usual at 1.31. It was after all of this that things would quickly become even more strange and my normal daily life would start to be affected. On Saturdays, I sometimes load up my extra potatoes I have and I take a drive into town where there's a small farmer's market. I usually walk off with some extra cash from this, so when I get the chance, I like to go and sell what I got. I kept yawning as I drove. This portal business had me losing a lot of my much needed sleep and that enormous hand had left me feeling disturbed and uneasy. 
There was a vague sense that things were just off. That things had changed since that dark hand had pointed at me. And as it turns out, I was right. But at that time, I felt relieved to be out on a nice day, driving to the market while I listened to some music on my old truck radio. It was a good feeling for things to be normal again. It wouldn't last long. I pulled up to the market. It was a bustling area filled with people buying goods or selling their own. I started unloading crates of potatoes from my truck and I placed them on one of the unused tables. I saw a lot of regulars walking around and I waved at a few of them as they noticed me setting up. I hung up my for sale sign and the people started coming over to buy my potatoes. A few of the regulars stopped by and talked to me, asked me how I was doing. I gave them a canned response of, doing well, because it's not like I could start talking about portals, but their conversations helped to further set me at ease. It was around that time that I began to notice these strange distortions in the air. A woman had come to talk to me. She had picked a handful of potatoes that she seemed eager to purchase. And we exchanged some pleasantries before she started to talk about the weather. I guess it was an easy topic for small talk. But it was then that I noticed something weird. As she was talking, her head started to stretch. And then it contorted in a weird way before spiraling in that familiar distortion that I had seen happen to the man who came out of the portal. I could only stand there looking like a fool. My eyes grew wide as I watched all of this happen. She kept talking, but her words were nothing but a garbled mess due to the distortion. I could only stare at her in horror as her head swirled and stretched in weird ways. But in a few seconds, everything returned to normal. She must have thought that I was rude because she angrily put the potatoes back and walked off in a huff. I didn't even utter a sorry or say anything to her. I was starting to feel sick. I took a long look around to see all those distortions happening everywhere. A man walked by with his leg bending and stretching in weird ways. A head of broccoli was twisting, and I was starting to feel freaked out. Nobody else seemed to take notice of this. It was like I was on some type of hallucinogen, but I can assure you that I wasn't. I guess that maybe this had something to do with those portals, but I wasn't going to hang around with this sort of thing happening. I wanted to get home, crawl into bed and sleep this all off. It would be better when I woke up, I reasoned. I began packing up my stuff, much to the disapproval of several people who were hoping to buy some potatoes. I just told them that I was sorry, but it was an emergency. I started loading the crates of potatoes back into my truck when I noticed one of the distortions on my truck's passenger door and then another that was on the crate of potatoes that I was carrying. I looked down at the crate and I saw the potatoes and crate bending and moving unnaturally. It all seemed to be just a visual thing because although it appeared to move and wriggle, the crate did not slip from my hand as I carried it. As I was loading the last crate into the truck, and getting ready to get the hell out of there. A man with a long, thick beard approached me. Look man, I have to go, it's... I started to say, but the bearded man just interrupted me. You can see it too, can't you? I can see that look of fear and panic in your eyes, he said. See what? What are you seeing? I was pretty sure that I knew what he was talking about but I played dumb until he said it. The distortions all around us. This isn't good. You've seen those portals. This is not good at all. The bearded man said. How do you know about the portals? Have you been sneaking around my property? I asked him defensively. No, no, nothing like that. But I've seen them before. These distortions too. Nothing good comes from this. What do you know about the portals? What are these distortions? It's a long story and I don't know everything, but we need to talk about it. 
I got a sneaking suspicion that if you don't act soon, things are going to get really bad. If I don't act soon, what does that mean? Look, if you need to fill me in on what's going on, then get talking. Another distortion appeared to my right, warping the air around it, and the two of us snapped our attention to it as it spiraled. The bearded man turned back to me and began to speak again. We can't talk here. I'll talk to you somewhere private, but I need to go home and get my son's notebook. Let's meet in a few hours, if you want to come. I interrupted the man there. Just come to my place, 8 o'clock tonight. I need some of this explained. I said. I knew I was taking a risk with this guy, but if you could help make me understand what all of this was, then I would take the chance. Okay, okay. The bearded man said while nodding. I pulled out a pen and a small address book I kept on hand, wrote my number and address down, and, and then tore the sheet and handed it to the man. No funny stuff. I expect only you to show up. I tried to say with an air of authority, but this man probably knew much more than me. He could already tell that I was scared and simultaneously clueless about all that was going on. The man nodded and walked off in the other direction, leaving me free to find the hop of my truck and drive home. The drive home was filled with those distortions popping up at any place they felt like, and unlike my trip there, I felt nervous as I made my way back home. But gradually, I was becoming adjusted to seeing them. So long as they were just visual, there was not too much to worry about. Although seeing them was enough to spike my blood pressure. When I got home, I tried to close my eyes and rest, but I was far too uneasy. These distortions were popping up all over my house, including in my bedroom. It was only after a long and anxious wait that the time finally arrived and that bearded man was knocking at my front door. We barely exchanged more than a hello and I invited him inside. I just wanted to get to the bottom of this, and this man hopefully had the answers. The bearded man looked around with what I thought was an air of curiosity, but more than likely, it was just a person adjusting to new surroundings. I had him follow me into the kitchen and offered him a seat at a small table before digging in one of my cabinets where I kept a few bottles of whiskey. You want a drink before we start talking? I asked the bearded man. Well, sure. That would make things a lot easier. He replied. I pulled out a half-filled bottle of whiskey and a nice glass, and I got ready to pour one. I saw that same distortion happening around the whiskey bottle. I looked to the bearded man who watched closely, and then I felt the weight of this whiskey bottle disappear from my hand. I didn't drop the bottle. It was just gone. It had just blinked out of existence. I was shocked as to what had just happened. Things are getting worse, the bearded man said. So you're telling me now that it's not just visual anymore. Stuff is going to start blinking out of existence, I asked. The bearded man sighed and stroked his beard a few times while I opened another whiskey bottle. Afraid so. At least that's how it happened to my son and I, the bearded man said. I poured out the glasses of whiskey and I handed one to him. I quickly took a shot's worth in my mouth and I swallowed and saw the bearded man do the same. The taste was strong, but it helped me relax a little bit. So how do I get this to stop? I asked. The man pulled out the notebook that he had brought with him and he started flipping through it. The notebook contained a series of sketches depicting the portal, but it also had sketches of other things that I assumed had come out of it including a deformed man with leeches for arms, a floating fiery skull, and what appeared to be some sort of man-tier hybrid, complete with antlers. It was much more bizarre than the basic man that I saw, but the bearded man stopped on a page that showed a sketch of that dark hand that was all too familiar. This thing, it's the source of it all. He said as he turned the notebook to me, 
so I could get a better look at it, but I already had recognized it as that shadowy hand. Yeah, that thing. Yeah, it pointed right at me the other night. Does it want to invade this world or something? Why is it in my field of all places? I asked. If it wanted to invade, it could do so with no issue. At least, that's what we think. My son and I think that it likes to play games. It creates these distortions that you've been seeing. It starts out as just visual, but eventually, it'll start taking things. Or as you said, blinking them out of existence. At first, it's just small things. But eventually, it'll start taking more and more. I can't tell you why it's in your field, but I think that it has chosen you for some reason, just like it chose my son. The bearded man explained. It chose your son. Just what exactly happened to him? How do I stop this? I asked. The man seemed a bit distressed, but he lifted his glass and took another shot worth of whiskey. The man looked off in the distance for a moment, before turning back to me and continuing to talk. A few years back it happened, just like it happened to you. My son and I ran a farm together. We were business partners, I guess you would call it. But then my son showed me the portal. He had seen it first. We watched it every night, and at first it was just something interesting. But before long, some weird stuff started to come out of that damn portal. It didn't ever hurt us or anything, but goddamn was some of that stuff scary. The five minutes of awe each night turned into five minutes of terror. And then we saw that dark hand that pointed at my son. And the bearded man said, And let me guess, you started seeing the distortions after that? I asked. Yes, exactly. Like I said, at first they were visual, and then they started to make things disappear. It was little things at first. Food from the fridge, bars of soap, spare keys. Just little inconveniences. But before long, it started to take more. I remember going to the local store and I watched the cashier just distort and disappear. Just like that. And everybody around acted like nothing had happened. My son had noticed it too, and before long, we had lost most of our neighborhood to that distortion. My son was becoming more and more erratic each day. He would write and draw in this notebook, and after a while, he told me that the only way to stop it was for him to enter the portal. He was convinced that the dark hand had wanted him. But if this thing is so powerful, that he can just remove things from existence, then why did he just not come and grab your son? That's the thing. It doesn't want to force you. You need to go in willingly. But it'll take and take until you decide to make that decision. It might blank out the whole world. Who knows how far it'll go. My son went in that portal and all of it stopped. But I never saw him again after that. I'm sorry about your son. But you're saying that I need to go in that thing. What's on the other side? I'm sorry. But that's the only way that we can stop it. And I don't know what is on the other side. There is no way to know. He said. The two of us sat in silence for several minutes, just drinking our whiskey. And before long, we were both drunk and sitting in the living room staring at the wall where my television used to be. The distortions had taken that away. And I had the creeping worry that this man was right and I would have to go into that portal. But I held out hope to finding another way to stop all of this. You want to see that portal again tonight? Maybe we can find a way to stop this from happening, besides me going into that, I said. The bearded man was hesitant at first, but then gave me a curt nod as we sobered up. I started to think of ways to try and stop all this from happening. But as the hours ticked by, I didn't come up with anything. 
Except for something stupid like throwing a few potatoes in there and hoping this would appease a beam that can remove things from existence. The bearded man sat quietly, often glancing at the notebook for a few minutes and then closing it, and stroking his beard for a few minutes before repeating the cycle. I think we were both pretty nervous about the portal opening tonight. The clock hit 1.20 and I grabbed two chairs and I set them by my window. The bearded man joined me with that notebook he carried in a pencil. I guess he wanted to document what came out. The portal appeared as it always did at 1.26. And it was only a few seconds before the routine of the man coming out and emitting that tone happened. But as we looked on, with the man emitting that ringing tone, the bearded man rose from his seat, letting the notebook and pencil simply fall to the floor. I looked over at him, and his eyes were large, his brows raised high as if in shock. What is it? You said that you've seen this before. I asked him. The bearded man stood with his mouth open, almost incredulous. That's... That's my son. I don't think that's your son. Maybe it looks like him, but that can't be him. I mean, look what he's doing. No human can do that. I said. Jesus Christ. Is this what always comes out? He asked. I only nodded at him as we continued to watch for a few more seconds. Before the darkness of the portal rippled. Which meant the arrival of something from that portal. The dark hand emerged and pressed a single sharp finger against the man's back. The ringing tone stopped, and we watched in horror as the shadow-like substance that composed the hand began to envelop the man, until his entire body was covered by the shadowy substance. The dark hand retreated back into the portal, and the now shadowy figure began to move. Its movements were unnatural, like it didn't know how to walk properly with the body. It shuffled towards my front door. Stumbling along the way as it adjusted and it learned how to use its legs. The awkward gait and shuffling figure were enough to send the two of us into a small panic. I rose from my seat almost instantaneously and the chair was pushed back onto the floor. I knew that I had left my front door unlocked and if that thing was coming to the door, there was no way that I wanted it to come inside. I ran downstairs as fast as I could manage, and I made sure that the front door was locked and secure. The bearded man made it down the stairs after me just a few seconds later, and we both looked at each other nervously. I guess this is what he meant by five minutes of terror, because my heart was beating out of my chest and I just wanted this all to be over. You said these things never hurt you, right? I asked the bearded man who was starting to sweat. Right, but I never had anything like this happen. I didn't expect to see my son, even if it's not really. A loud knocking on the door interrupted the bearded man mid-sentence, as the two of us stood there not knowing what exactly to do. The handle of the door jiggled as the thing attempted to open it. We looked at each other with scared eyes, as the knocking got louder and more forceful. But then it stopped and was replaced with a deeply distorted voice that chilled me to the core. Father. I heard it say from behind the safety of the door. I looked over at the bearded man, who was wringing his hands and sweating even more than before. Father. I know you're in there. You know what has to be done. The shadow son said. The bearded man's face was a mixture of fear and confusion as he stood there, seemingly contemplating what he was supposed to do, like he had two tough choices, but he didn't want to choose either. I could just tell by his hesitation that he was thinking of listening to that thing outside. That's not your son. It came from that freaking portal. I shouted at the bearded man. I turned back to see that familiar distortion around my door. It was going to blink out of existence in a few seconds. I was sure of it. I started to turn to tell the bearded man that we needed to run for it, but I felt cold steel against my back, and I heard the click of a revolver as it was primed and ready to fire. 
I'm sorry, but even if that's not my son, that thing is right. You are going to that portal. It's the only way to stop all of this. My son didn't take the leap into that portal so you could baby out and leave people to get erased from existence. If you don't go in there, his sacrifice meant nothing. The bearded man said to me as the door finally blinked out of existence, leaving the Shadow Sun free access to the two of us. The Shadow Sun shuffled into the house, his limbs moving unnaturally as he closed in on me. Stopping just before my face, he stood still, and he seemingly observed me with eyes that darted and moved all over the place, even rolling back in his head at points. While these were still human eyes, it was like they no longer served the purpose of sight, just remnants of the human body that had been changed into something else. The eyes were the only parts of him that hadn't been entirely enveloped by the shadowy substance, and if the eyes are the gateway to the soul, then I'm pretty sure that thing before me was soulless. You made the right choice, Father. The Shadow Son said in that deeply distorted voice, and then stepped aside allowing the two of us to walk out the doorway, back towards the portal. The bearded man simply pushed the gun further into my back while I weighed my options. My mind raced as I tried to find a solution, but just like trying to find a way to avoid going into that portal, my mind was blank. My only thought was to stall it all and wait for the portal to close. Get going, we don't have much time. I know this isn't what you wanted, but there is no hope of stopping this thing. My son would have stopped it otherwise, but now look at him, the bearded man said. I made my way unwillingly towards the portal. Each step felt like it took more and more effort, but I resigned myself to the fact that I was going in that portal. As I drew near it, I stared into that darkness, sensing that the thing was just waiting for me to enter. I imagined that dark entity smiling and just waiting for his prize to show up. A ripple formed in that darkness and out came the dark hand that beckoned me forward. I silently wished that I had just a little more time, and I guessed that the thing could sense my wish and it granted my request. No! The bearded man shouted, and I craned my head around to see that distortion surrounded his body. And I knew that he was going to be removed from reality in a few seconds. I saw the bearded man's face change from anguish to despair to a small smirk and he turned his head to that shadow son who I noticed was also being affected by the distortion. I'm sorry son, it looks like I failed you again. The bearded man said before turning to me. Do the right thing. He said and a second later. He had disappeared alongside the shadowy figure that once resembled his son. I fell to the ground and I watched the portal close at 131, and I sat there for a long time after that. An overwhelming feeling of guilt overcame me. I knew then that the bearded man was right. I couldn't just let people disappear from the world. It's been a few more days since that night, and things have largely gone to pieces. I mean literally pieces of my home have been affected by the distortion and removed from reality. I've been left with just enough that I could write out my experience and let you all know of what happened to me. The notebook that the bearded man carried was sent to my nephew since I had no one else to send it to. I know that you all probably say that it's just some bullshit, but if you see one of those portals, just know that it is inevitable that you will go inside it. It is 1.26am now, and I can see that blue light already. Wish me luck, folks. Farewell.